Hello, and thanks for tuning in to another episode of Owl's Air Guns. Today, we are going to take a look inside Crossman's 3622 PCP rifle. Um, I have not seen anyone do this before, and I could not find um, schematics or, or parts drawings online for this. So, this is going to be a first for me, and... Um, Without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Now, because the rifle's long, it's a little challenging in the beginning. First thing we're going to do is remove that stock. Uh, milled steel, shout out to them. Let me know I was going to need a 760 force Allen key to get that stock off. So um, let's go ahead and do that. The weapon has been cleared. The tank is without air. I shot it and told that it is more than dry, but um, we can go ahead for YouTube and confirm that. I'll either shoot a hole in my desk or not. Um, yeah, obviously she is dry. Only thing we can hear is the action of the hammer. So, let's go ahead and find out what's inside this thing. I'm going to zoom in a little bit and reposition the camera so that we can actually see what I'm doing there. Here we go. go ahead. Okay, I think we can probably see a little better uh, now. Also, as we start here, the one request I did hear from viewers is that when we put this thing back together, we upgrade the breech. And I've got a Crossman steel breech and a bolt and all that right here to do that when we get to that point. But starting with the stock, I've got a 764th Allen key here. We'll go ahead and um, start loosening them up. One of the things, and if you're a new builder, probably not the kind of thing to be doing, but one of the things I strongly recommend to people that want to work on their Crossman air guns is um, one of these little American uh, or British, I guess, Imperial uh, Allen key sets. They will do, they'll come in very handy on your crosswind guns. Other thing that you want to get is a number two square bit or Robertson's bit invented in Canada, as one of my viewers informed me. Okay, so we are looking like we should be loose. Make sure, yeah, free there. I also have a little parts bin that I've got here. I'm going to set that aside. So this part comes off quite easily. Move that back out of the way. Let me um, get my parts thing. Okay, we are going to go ahead and remove this back piece of the stock, at least this portion of it with a 530 seconds Allen key. If you're using one of these little sets, that's the last key in the set. And let me, let me sit down to do this. And there we go. Drop that loose. So far with most of the Crossman guns I've worked on, if you need an Allen key, it can be accommodated in that set. Now, um, when I've worked on Gamo Springers and some of that, I've often had to reach, well, for one thing, their metric, and um, then also had to reach for larger Allen keys to do something like that. Put that in our parts bin, along with our washer. So we took a screw and washer out there. It still feels secure, which makes me believe that in all likelihood we're fixed somewhere under this main tube. So let's go ahead and um, remove this. And we're going to do that via a straight bladed screwdriver for this rear screw. And we need an 0.05 Allen hook. A good spring in it there of oh, 0.05 allen key for the front now um, i have one of those in here you get one of those in that set that i showed you but i lost or broke mine a long time ago but i always keep a, another one in here oh, i think i got it right there 
Okay, and this is our familiar breech screw. Let me go ahead and get this thing in the hole. Oops, did I grab the right one? Maybe I did not. I hope I didn't misplace it. Actually, those both look a little thick. No, that's the right one. Kind of in the shadow of the light right here. There we go. Okay, it would be really... Oh, careful, that one's tough. Squeeze there a little bit. There we go. When I'm breaking these loose the first time, I find it helps to um, take a little pressure off that screw by grabbing the barrel right there and kind of squeezing against it in the tube. And um, you heard that break free. This one, I don't know that it was Loctited, but boy, she had. She was in there firmly. All right. That light's killing me. Let me move that. Sorry about that on the camera. Uh, okay. It's not much better. Okay. Okay, well, I've got to do this under better light, guys. Forgive me. But, um, oop. I just dropped the screw into it. There we go. All right. Breech screw is removed. Put my whiz bang key back there. Did not need that one. And breech screw goes in the box. Got a straight blade on here. Oh, let me make sure the camera's good still. Okay, just remove the breech screw from there. Gonna go ahead and um, again, right in my own light. Watch so that we don't lose our transfer port as we work the breech. This, ooh, we've got a barrel band that is holding on tight. Let me see, there we go. Come on, guys, give me a little room here. That's um, there we go. Oop, oh, bottom of my breech came off, okay. Now that's giving me a little room. That was kind of awkward. Apologize for being all thumbs there, but it looks like we're where we need to be. Okay, these barrel bands, I did not find anything to fit the fastener on those. So I came to conclude that they are a slide on, slide off affair. Also need to, there's my transfer port, put that in the parts box. One of the things that really impressed me about Crossman's 3622 is the quality of the finish um you know we weren't seeing i wasn't seeing finishes on remington firearms like this anymore um to me that is one very good looking finish on that air tube so we've got our stock off we've got our barrel off um all right, let's go ahead and rearrange the workspace and take it from here. Okay, I am sorry here, guys. I uh, had a technical difficulty and I actually missed recording something here. So um, I need to walk through and explain it to you. Um, when you get to the next stage after having taken out all the screws, how we remove the stock is you have to reach in and when you look at this trigger group in the back, there will be a pin that is sticking up, and I'll try and re-record this at some point. The pin uh, is what keeps pressure on everything and secures that safety. I have to reach in with something like this, get behind it, and bend it out slightly. Don't be rough with it, just bend it out a little bit. At that point, you're able to push the safety out. If you notice, the safety is larger on one side than the other. So when you lift up the spring, you can push the safety out, and that will release this from the stock. It goes ahead and just levers out then. So now we have them apart. And um, 
I think that's probably a good place to call this part one. And in part two, we're going to break this down and get inside the tube and see what all we have going on there. Hey, thanks a lot for following me, and the other part should be out really soon. Bye-bye.